As we gather for a Hompa Honganji Mission of Hawaii Board Dance Experience 2021, may we be guided and assured by great wisdom and compassion. As we gather to humbly express our deepest gratitude to great wisdom and compassion, which offers the promise of supreme enlightenment, perfect peace and happiness to one and all equally, let us gratefully remember all those who came before us. One of the ultimate goals of Obon is the realization that our life and living is made possible by countless others, as the Obon story of Mogalana and his mother ultimately share with us. Let us try to realize the equality and preciousness of all life, all existence, moving away from self-centeredness and selfishness to a world filled with mutual respect and appreciation for and of one another. As the eminent Buddhist leader, His Eminence Koshin Otani encourages, quote, think more expansively of your connectedness to all life. All things on earth, all things in the universe are in the fold of a great life force linking us all together. In this world, there is no life that was ever lived in vain. There is no life that is meaningless. All life is linked together. All of us share in the light that Amida Buddha shines upon us." End quote. Tonight, in the embrace of great compassion, let us rejoice and express our gratitude through song and dance and a sense of community and Sangha. Please join me in awareness, joy, and gratitude to recite the Buddha's honored name. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Good evening and welcome to Bone Dance Experience 2021. Obong is a time of remembrance, reflection, and hopefully realization, rejoicing, and responding in gratitude. In a sense, Obong is about relationships and being connected. Connected to what, you may ask? Well, everything and everyone would be the ultimate answer, but let's start closer to home. Obong is a time of remembrance when we remember and honor our predecessors, which for most of us would be our family members. In many cases, the good life that we live today is the result of the determination, sacrifices, perseverance, and struggles of previous generations and other members of our family. 
Rarely is it only through my own effort that I am what I am or am where I am in my life. Obong is a time in which we pause from our very hurried, busy lives to remember loved ones and those closest to us who have passed on before us. It is a time dedicated to remembering them with gratitude for what they have done for us. As we reflect with the Buddha's teaching, Dharma, as our guide, an important realization is that everything and everyone is interconnected and interrelated. A fundamental Buddhist teaching is, quote, when this is, that is. From the arising of this comes the arising of that. When this isn't, that isn't. From the cessation of this comes the cessation of that, end quote. We cannot exist without others, including the natural environment. This is a very important realization to have, as I have a tendency to be centered on myself and as human beings centered on people. But the real world and picture is much larger and bigger, global and even universal. A realization that wants to happen at the wrong time is our interconnectedness with all others and the expression of our joyful appreciation and gratitude to others. Part of tonight's presentation will feature recipes. To be sure, it cannot compare to the experience of actually eating at a bone dance, but we hope that you'll enjoy the recipes and the intent with which the recipes are shared with a spirit of joy and gratitude. In the Japanese language, there are two beautiful phrases connected with food, in particular to eating and drinking namely, itadakimasu and gochisou sama deshita. Itadakimasu means, I humbly and gratefully receive this food, and is said before partaking of any food or drink. We humble ourselves before the food and express our gratitude to the plants and animals whose life supports my life. A depth of gratitude is owed to nature. At the end of a meal, and even consuming something as simple as water, and the phrase gochso sama deshita is said. By voicing gochso sama deshita, we honorably, with gratitude, acknowledge the person who cooked the meal or food that we just enjoyed. The Chinese ideograms for gochso sama paint the image of our host busily shopping for the meal with a horse. However, from a Buddhist perspective, this acknowledgement and gratitude can be extended to beyond our host or cook to include all hands, such as farmers, truck drivers, store clerks, and even more individuals who were also involved in the process which has culminated in the meal which I just partook. One of the anticipated measurable outcomes of a boom is a more balanced lifestyle with a new perspective. In contrast to a life centered on oneself and greed, a life of moderation, oneness, and appreciation and gratitude to others based on interdependence. However, when I honestly reflect on myself, I find that I do not always express this kind of deep gratitude or appreciation. Then, have I failed? Is there no recourse? This is where Jodo Shinshu or Shin Buddhism becomes especially relevant. Amida Buddha especially reaches out to those of us who are unable to always live okage samade and itadakimas and gosso samadeshita fully with our entire being. Great wisdom and compassion as Amida Buddha does not require us to perfect ourselves before saving us. Great compassion is unconditional and it embraces us just as we are without judgment. In fact, the reason Amida Buddha made the great compassionate 18th vow is precisely because of this imperfect eye. However, to me, that does not mean that I cannot aspire to be otherwise. Great compassion includes all in its embrace, and from profound gratitude to it, as I lament my continued imperfections, I try to be less self-centered, selfish, and arrogant, as encouraged by the Buddha Dharma. In Honganji, Obong is referred to as a gathering of joy. What are we joyfully grateful for? Foremost, it is the great wisdom of Amida Buddha and the compassion of Amida Buddha who made the great vow or promise that one and all, without exception, will attain perfect peace and happiness and be free of suffering and sorrow by simply 
and trusting in the Buddha. However, all joy and gratitude is not only at the end of life, with my birth in the Pure Land, but also experienced in the here and now, as I live day to day, as I am nurtured by the Buddha Dharma and begin to realize just how interdependent our lives are. As I come to understand the malevolent support which I am receiving from so many others and knowing that I am already in the embrace of great compassion. I want to conclude by sharing a personal interpretation of a recent current event. As many of you know, on July 20th, 2021, Jeff Bezos and Mark Bezos successfully traveled to space on Blue Origin. In a news interview, Mark Bezos was asked, how did it change you? His response was, quote, in the best sense, I have never felt smaller than I did today. It was an incredibly humbling and beautiful sense of personal scale, right? That I am such a small part of all of this, end quote. His brother Jeff interjected, quote, look at Earth from up there. It will make you more humble, end quote. Their comments expressed the same wonder and insight that many other astronauts, including Hawaii's own Lieutenant Colonel Ellison Onizuka had as they viewed Earth from space. This sense of humility to me is another outcome of the Obon experience. As we realize the interconnectedness and interrelatedness of all life, all existence, we become humbler as we live in grateful awareness of the oneness of all life, all existence. From the Hongpahonganji Mission of Hawaii, please enjoy tonight's Bomb Dance Experience 2021.
Uh, you know, for me, Taiko has, has always been about, um, you know, bringing people together, you know, not only within, within our Taiko group, you know, the drummers, we always become close, we practice together, we, we perform together, we travel together, we can't help but become close-knit, but it's also the, the support network, you know, the, the family, our friends, our temple members, um, you know, the other Taiko groups nearby, and just the, the local community that, that comes together because of the drum, because of Taiko, that I think um, it really becomes something special. Now, taking that to the next level in terms of Taiko and Obon, you know, when people think Taiko, they usually think Kumi Daiko or ensemble drumming. You know, it, it's, it's the, the drums and the drummers on stage and the wow factor and it's loud and there's all this, this movement, but the audience is in their seats and that, that's what people usually think of. But when it comes to, to Obon and Bon Taiko, you know, I appreciate how the, the Taiko, you know, comes together not only with the rest of our, our musicians, but you know, also with, with, with the pre-recorded music and especially with, with the dancers to create something that I think is really magical. You know, it's when everything clicks together and you're up in the Yagura and that, that feeling of community, of togetherness. You know, it's not only with, with the people in the here and now, but also with those that, that may have come before that, that have danced in this space or may have drummed in the Yagura before me. And it's, it's also, you know, the people who created the the music and the rhythms and the and the movements and when all of that comes together in that moment you know when the music is playing and we're under the lanterns i think that moment that feeling it, it's 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 very fleeting it's i guess i guess the word would be it's it's very ephemeral um it's in the moment and it's definitely something that is special and and to me i think that is the beauty of taiko and Obon. Japanese food then. Is it good? Yes. She also does like spaghetti and also more. Wow, you have a such a nice abortion then. And I like your hair. My mom did it this morning. Oh yeah. I like all the flower on your Bacha put it these on. Really? Mm -hmm. She's from Japan, oh. so she knows how to do this. That's why I have a kimono on and also this. Yeah, I right. used to have a grandpa, but then he passed away. Do you remember your grandpa? Yes. His name was Gigi. Oh, 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 oh. 
On Kauai, the Kauai Buddhist Council coordinates the bone dances and schedule for all Buddhist temples. All temples dance to the same dance and same music. We encourage everyone to participate. While each temple has their own religious significance to the bone dance, we all have one thing in common. We dance with a grateful heart and mind for our ancestors, for because of them we are what we are today. With that in mind, we see dancers from all walks of life, young and old, different religious and ethnic backgrounds. We are so grateful to see everyone joyfully participating in the bone dance. But wait, did I say everyone? Back in 2007, I noticed that there were very few men, if any, dancing in the ring. How come? The Nisei men dance, why not the younger generation? At one of the bone dances, a friend and I sat in the audience eating Kauai's famous flying saucer and watched our wives dance. A young tourist couple sat in front of us and was also enjoying our local bone dance food. After the short service, the minister explained that everyone has parents, grandparents, and friends. It didn't matter what nationality or religious preference you had. So if you want to show your gratitude for those ancestors or friends who have passed, join the dancers in a ring and dance your heart away. Surprisingly, the young tourist couple stood up and entered the ring. They didn't know a single dance, not even Tanko Bushi, but they danced the night away. What's wrong with this picture? We local guys sitting down, but a young tourist couple was not ashamed, but happy to dance, even though they didn't know how. So in 2008, we asked the late Mrs. Aiko Nakaya if she would be willing to teach some men to bone dance. She was so happy that we wanted to dance. A group consisted of a diverse group of men from various ethnic and religious backgrounds. 11 men started weekly practice in October 2008 learned the 17 dances, and was ready to dance in the 2009 bone dance season. The men chose the name Men of the Koi Dynasty and was dressed in a black and white hoppy coat emblazoned with a large red and white koi on the back, just like the one I'm wearing. Thanks to Mrs. Nakaya's patient life of style of teaching, the men has since enjoyed dancing while and understanding the meaning of the bone dance. In 2010, with the encouragement of Mrs. Nakaya, the men of the Koi dynasty started to participate in the intermission entertainment for bone dances. There were special dances taught by Mrs. Nakaya. After the passing of Mrs. Nakaya, her legacy continues through Mrs. Lorraine Kawane, Mrs. Michiko Hirao, and Fei Tateyeshi. 2020 was the 12th anniversary and while some of the original members no longer dance, we have slowly grown and now consist of 20 men, three of whom are Buddhist ministers. While a pandemic has caused a pause for two years, the men of the Koi dynasty looks forward to the 2022 bone dance season so we can dance with gratitude in our hearts and mind for all who have passed before us. Because of them, we are what we are today. Namo Amidabutsu. like another year without an impersonal bond. But even though Obon makes me think about the realm of hungry ghosts, I can't help but think that my favorite part of Obon is the food. Maui bone dances have tons of food. I haven't been to a lot of bone dances around the state but I feel like Maui's got the most food. Everything from chili and rice and hot dogs and teriyaki plates. And the food that I think of the most when I think of a bon, for Maui, it has to be chow fun. 
Growing up in the temple, I remember waking up early and uh, helping my grandpa and my dad and uh, getting together and cooking big batches of chow fun and woks uh, and uh, uh, you know it's it was a good experience getting getting together with everyone and working hard. If you're ever in Maui, you definitely gotta come and try our chow fun whenever we have in-person Obon again.
Yes, um, my earliest memory of uh, boom dance was, uh, of course, uh, um, during the uh, war years, all activities related to Japanese activity was banned, and so there was no boom dance. And so after the war, I think it was around 1947 or thereabouts, when um, Bon Dan started to come back. And um, of course, I was a little young yet and I was living way out in the boonies, so I didn't get to really uh, see the Bon Dance until I was in high school. And um, that's when I was growing up in Big Island. And uh, so we used to, uh, I had a pickup truck. And so I had a group of people up on the truck and we would go all over Hilo and along Hamakua coast uh, up to Pawilo and um, out to even uh, Kau uh, for bond dance. And we used to have a lot of fun going bond dance. The thing was, I remember the Bond dance music was all live music, no recorded music that I remember. And um, during uh, um, about halfway, they would always have intermission, and the uh, host would bring out platters of uh, onigiri and takuan. And we, I, I always look forward to that. It was really great. Yeah. Now, that was during my high school years. Then after that, uh, of course, um, when I joined Kaigo Honganji, this was back in 1965. Yes, um, I believe I may have been one of the people that got it started that way. And um, we were using the Westeria, I mean the, the um, Monstera leaves, because it sort of looked like they had the shape of the Sagarifuji. And so, and, and it's it's a large leaf, and so it's easy to decorate the whole wall. Um, and, and, <clears throat> uh, and so we started doing that. And gradually, as more people uh, brought in other kinds of flowers and plants, we started using whatever people brought. And so we just kept on adding and adding whatever came, whatever we had, we just added. This past couple of years, we didn't have our bone dance because of the pandemic. But we're very hopeful. I think uh, for sure we will have one starting next year. And when we do, 
Well, we welcome everybody. Everybody in this uh, um, on Oahu to come visit us and uh, see how our dance uh, uh, is. Also, I want to put in a plug for our food booth. Our food booth, I think, is the best. Okay. Good evening once again. From the office of the bishop, I would like to thank all of you for letting us come into your homes once again this year. I hope that you were able to reminisce and joyously dance, dance, dance like Happy Mogalana to express your joy and gratitude. And that each day you will respond in gratitude by reciting the Nembutsu and try to live affirmatively, unselfishly, and inclusively as best you can for all of our sake. Finally, I'd like to end by humbly asking you for your help and assistance in supporting financially and morally the temple nearest you so the temple can continue to be an important part of your community. From the bottom of my heart, thank you and Namo Amida Butsu. Entrusting in all inclusive wisdom and all embracing compassion. Namanda.